So you probably have a lot of questions right now. Um, such as, what's with the new layout? Why is he wearing a stupid red collared shirt? Why can I see the green screen and he doesn't fix that? Um, I, I don't have enough time to answer all of your stupid questions. But just know that I'm, I'm working on it. All right, This took me three and a half hours to do this. Look at that. The box. I, you know... It's good enough for now because I want to start making videos. So I'm working. I got more stuff coming in the mail. We're working on it. But I got some stuff I want to tell you. First, this channel. Come on, man. The camera just. This channel. I'm in a tiny little box here. This channel is moving from a NFL draft channel to a Green Bay Packers channel that also does draft content so before you unsubscribe we're still doing this i just don't want to have two different channels like competing against each other and i'm trying to grow to i'm just i'm growing one channel it is a packers channel that does draft content sometimes um if you are a packer fan boom and i can't even look at that i can't even do it i want to point at it it's the best i can do right there and the background i chose makes it look blurry it's not blurry it's just that's the <laughs> this there you go that and you can find it i can't even go up here because whoop you can find it on spotify stop it stitcher google play and itunes or wherever you get po i gotta look at the wherever you get podcasts don't look at yourself look at the camera that's how youtube video i i do podcasts so usually i'm just i'm doing this i'm just but the packers do ba -doo -ba -doo, and i do whatever i want and I drink my coffee, and I get up and I go around to the bathroom, and I pace back and forth, and I yell at stuff that's down here, and I just, this is weird. I gotta just stare at this tiny little circle. <sighs> but anyways, um, so that's number one. Um, secondly, I am getting involved with a network called the Fan to Fan Network. I will play the video for that right now. Hey guys, Joseph Robert here. Lighten up, Lou. Darian of the Spotlight Raiders talking like the AV Sports fan. Joseph DN 2.0. Derek Larger. Joe Nubo. Dougley Durong. It's your boy Brush from the door camp coming at you. And you're watching the Fan to Fan Network. The, the voice that sports fans deserve. deserve. So the Fan to Fan Network has a bunch of different uh, influencers, all for different NFL teams. So you're going to have a Lions, a Vikings, a Bears, and a Packers. I'm not the official Packers guy, but, you know... I'm the, I'm the number two Packers guy. It doesn't matter. It's just, I'm a part of it, and it's going to be fun, and you should go check it out. Now, I thought about what would be the best way to kind of meld together the draft and the Packers channel. Seems like a pretty simple solution. Let's do a seven-round 2021 Green Bay Packers draft. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, so before we get started, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, wherever that is around here, and hit the little bell notification so you know when new videos come out. Um, so as of right now, the Green Bay Packers just have their seven picks, one through seven. You can see over on the left-hand side which those picks are. I'm getting all this stuff from Tankathon, so, you know, let's not get into the nuance of, well, they're not really going to be 20 foot. Dude, I, I don't care if they won the Super Bowl to get the first overall pick, okay? It's just, it's, my goodness, it's July, so let's relax a little bit. Um... But I want to get started with the first overall pick, which a lot of people, a lot of people, and I'm not mad about it, I understand it, have the Green Bay Packers taking a wide receiver. Usually, it is Bateman out of Minnesota because that's just kind of, he just kind of fits in that area as far as back of the first round wide receiver. Um, in fact, I think Broschmo, who is also in Fan to Fan Network, just posted a uh, mock draft. Be sure to go check that out. I believe he had the Packers taken Bateman. I've had the Packers taken Bateman several times. But let's really think about this for a second. First of all, the Green Bay Packers are robots. 
They have no emotions. They have no fear. They have formulas and numbers and tradition, and they stick to it very, very loyally. Um, one of the things that they do um, or don't do is give third contracts to offensive linemen. I don't know how many times we've said there's no way we're getting rid of that guy. He's going to stick around forever, and then they're gone. We've got David Bakhtiari coming up on his third contract. We've got Corey Lindsley coming up on his next contract. So even if we keep David Bakhtiari, we have Elton Jenkins, who seems to be a great pick on left guard spot, but what do we do at center? Are we also giving Corey Lindsley another contract? I kind of doubt it. Billy Turner, who we picked up in free agency, not doing all that great of a job. And we've got a filler at right tackle that we got from Detroit. So we still need a right tackle. We need a right tackle. We need a right guard. We need a center. We might need a left tackle. There's no question in my mind the most important position is not wide receiver. I don't even think it's close. It's offensive line, more specifically offensive tackle, but interior is also pretty important. So with that said, with the first pick uh, for the Packers, (laughs) with the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select... Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle out of Alabama. As of right now, Alex uh, Leatherwood, I have on my board, which I don't exactly know where you can go check that out, so just we'll deal with that at another time. I have him 23rd overall, making him a really good fit right here. Um, Six foot six, 310 pounds. As of right now, we're going to slide him over to right tackle and assume that David Bakhtiari is going to stick around, and then we'll work on the interior a little bit, and we'll just be happy. Another thing to keep in mind Um, when you look at a lot of these Shanahan guys who like to build around the run, one of the first things they do, Sean McVay, um, uh, the Shanahans, they rebuild the offensive line, right? You got to get different guys in these positions. And let's not forget the Green Bay Packers have had a really good offensive line, but they're really good at what? Pass blocking. They're not, David Bakhtiari is one of the best offensive tackles in football, assuming you don't really care about run blocking. So... Um, Alex Leatherwood, a big mauling monster. We're going to slide on the right side. We're not going to overthink it, but do keep in mind how important it is that the Packers address offensive line. I know we want wide receiver. It is what it is. Offensive line is the biggest thing that we need moving forward. So now with the second pick, I'll be be honest, I wouldn't mind going in a different direction, but I do know that there would be riots in the streets if I don't address the wide receiver position by at least the second round. Um, So with that thought in mind, with the 56th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Tylen Wallace, Oklahoma State. Um, So first of all, the Green Bay Packers dominate the second round when it comes to wide receivers, which is another reason why you kind of want to see it, right? If you go to the third round, the Packers have been just terrible with the third round. But Devontae Adams, Jordy, Randall, it's pretty extensive, pretty much every great receiver that the Packers have had recently with the exception of Donald Driver um, there were second round picks so um, the the thing with Tylen Wallace he doesn't really fit the mold of what the Packers seem to be going for which is you know roughly seven feet tall 400 pounds just monsters Tylen Wallace is six foot 180 to 185 who knows what they actually are um, there's all different listings all over the place but what I really like about him is He's not super tall. He's not super fast. You go through the list of traits, and there's there's nothing that really stands out, which sounds weird, but at the same time, what I really want, what I want the Packers to get is to get away from the RAS, to get away from the, the, the statistics and all this weird stuff, and just look for great wide receivers, and that's what Tylen Wallace is. He sort of reminds me of CeeDee Lamb in a way from the first, you know, if you look at CeeDee Lamb, it's like, well, is he super fast? No. Is he super tall? No. What does he do so well? He just dominates. That's what he does. He gets, he gets, you know, not tackled. <laughs> he he uh, he catches everything. Great hands, great body control. Um, he's just a good wide receiver. He's he's got some refinement and whatnot that needs to go on, obviously, because he's not C.D. Lamb and he's not going early first round, um, route running, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think Tylen Wallace just fits the mold of just being a really good wide receiver that you're going to be able to put with Aaron Rodgers and trust. That he's going to be in the right place at the right time doing the right stuff. So with the second pick, Tylen Wallace. Well, the goal is to get this done in 10 minutes, but let's shoot for 20, shall we? I'm a little long-winded, all right? The Packers, this thing is obnoxious. 
Also, keep in mind that although this video is about, uh, you know, nine minutes in, I've been working on this for eh, five, six hours. Anyways, um, now I want to address the position that I think is actually probably the... It's not the biggest need because that's offensive line. It is not the biggest want because that's wide receiver. But I think it is the position with the least amount of talent. No offense to Christian Kirksey and whatnot. And I know we just drafted a guy, but that's going to be linebacker. Um, like everything else, we got to see how this pans out. If, if Kirksey ends up being a great linebacker, maybe we're fine. I don't know. But for now, that's the, the position that scares me the most, especially considering the biggest issue the Packers had, at least as far as the games in which they lost, 49ers was the embarrassing display um, against the run now it wasn't all the linebackers fault but anyways again need to speed this up with the 88th pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Green Bay Packers select Nick Bolton Missouri so Nick Bolton is first of all he's a good fit which is why I mean a, a good fit in terms of 88th uh, on the board um, but he is He's a run defender. He's a big, strong, thumper type guy. And um, that's going to probably hurt us a little bit in terms of coverage. We may have to look elsewhere to find a guy that can do that kind of stuff or maybe just use safeties. But I think for the fixing the big problems that we have, I'm going to go with Nick Bolton and hope that he can come in and just start smashing some people. All right, so with the 120th pick now, um, what I'm going to do is something the Packers have done several times. We've seen them in the past um, double up. We saw him go back-to-back -back DBs with Kevin King and Josh Jackson. We saw Jair and Josh Jones. We saw, um, I think I did those backwards. <laughs> we saw uh, Aaron Jones and Jamal. We saw EQ and MVS. So they, they like to, when there's a need, and you know sometimes when they don't exactly address it early enough, like linebacker is a big need and we didn't go first or second round, we'll just double up. And so that's what I'm going to do here with the 120th pick. We're going with Jabril Cox, linebacker out of LSU. Um, now, the benefit here is we're doubling up, which means we're getting two linebackers. So it's we're solving this issue, right? That's what's happening right now. We're 100% we're solving this issue. But beyond that, Nick Bolton, as I said, is a smash mouth linebacker, whereas Jabril Cox is more of a toolsy, longer, six foot four, athletic, sideline to sideline kind of guy. So we're covering all of our bases here. Um, worst case scenario, hopefully one of them pans out and we finally got a linebacker. Best case scenario, we got two guys. We've got our, our um, run defender and we've got our, our cover guy that can play man to man against tight ends, et cetera, et cetera. So with the, again, 120th pick in the fourth round the Packers select Jabril Cox LSU all right so with the 152nd pick now we're in the fifth round I'm going to stay on the defensive side of the ball hello there phone um but at this time I'm going to try to get some help for Mr. Kenny Clark who is I'm not going to say alone because he's got a lot of help on the outside but along the inside I want to get him a little bit more um we've 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 gone down this path just about every year, so maybe this doesn't have to happen. As I said, we got Kiki that we're trying to see if he's going to work out. Montrevious maybe is going to get one more shot, assuming he doesn't get cut, uh, which he very well may. Um, but we're going to try to get him a little bit of help. And with that, with the 152nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, brain is fried, the Green Bay Packers select... Jalen Redmond, defensive tackle, Oklahoma, six foot three, 278 pounds. So, it's it, I'm kind of torn. I'm, the biggest reason I went with him is because he fits with the 152nd overall spot or whatever. But really, he does kind of fit that mold. He's he's a, maybe a tad smaller than you'd like, but Mike Pettin likes the tall, lean kind of guy. That's what Kingsley Kiki is. That's what um, kind of Dean Lowry is. Dean Lowry's a little bit bigger, but. Um, he likes the long, lean, penetrating defensive tackles. Now, that doesn't necessarily help us with the run-stopping issues that we have. But, um, again, we got some linebackers to address that, and we got a couple extra rounds. Um, I feel like big, kind of stocky, stuff-the-run kind of guys might fall down the draft a little bit further. So I, I honestly don't know what we're doing in the next couple rounds. I don't have this pre-planned out. Um, so we'll see it as it comes. But that's definitely something I want to keep my options open for 
is to just get kind of a big stocky defensive tackle. But for now, Jalen Redmond, Oklahoma, um, 6'3", 278, going to stand next to Mr. Kenny Clark. All right, so we're in the sixth round now, pick 184. And, and something else that I want to keep everybody um, in mind about, just, just ignore me at this point, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> is the fact that um, the cornerback position is very much up in the air. Um, Kevin King is due a contract. He is a free agent as of 2021. So, you know, high hopes that he really steps up his game and is a great cornerback. Um, arguably was the better corner on the team down the stretch. Um, but has his performance warranted a contract through the course of his career, especially given the injuries and whatnot? No, there's no guarantee that he's going to be around. Um, the same is true for uh, Josh Jackson. We don't know if he's going to still be around or if they're going to give him more time or if they're going to move on from him. He may not even be on the team in 2020. We have no idea. Um, there are other people that are on the team that might possibly be able to step up and, and fill that role. A lot of fan favorites, obviously, but it is still a good idea to bring in some extra competition, even if Kevin King sticks around and if we do pay him. Um, there's still questions as far as depth at corner behind Kevin King if he even stays. So it, it may even be a bigger need than what I am, um, you know, making it out to be right now. But with that, with the, uh, where are we at? 184th pick in the sixth round, the Green Bay Packers select Elijah Griffin, cornerback, USC. Six foot, 175, um... I'll be honest, I don't know a ton about Elijah Griffin other than he's a little bit smaller. But um, again, it's really just at this point at the end of the draft, we're bringing in some extra depth and we're hoping that he's going to come in and compete. And hopefully it doesn't make that big of a difference because Kevin King balls out and gets paid. But again, we've already gone through several people that need contracts. You can't pay everybody. You can't pay David Bakhtiari and Aaron Jones and Corey Lindsley and Kevin King. You can't do it. So... Um, We'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays out. But I think cornerback next year, whether it's free agency or the draft, is something that um, we're probably going to want to have our eyes on. All right, finally, seventh round, pick 216. Um, we could go a lot of different directions here, but typically toward the end of the draft, I like to look at flyers that have some potential, right? If you, if you grab a quarterback in the seventh round, odds are he's not going to be any good. There are some positions, though, that can still thrive. One of the things I mentioned, and a couple different factors. First of all, we spent a lot of time on defense outside of getting that one wide receiver. Um, but outside of that, one of the positions and one of the needs, and what also I said is maybe the biggest need for this team is offensive line. I think interior offensive linemen, um, you know, again, check out the Packernet podcast. I've got a whole episode. I think I've done two separate episodes talking about which positions um, do you find success in which rounds. It's something to that effect. Um, interior offensive linemen, you got about as many top 10, top 20, top starting offensive guards that came at the end of the uh, draft as you do toward the middle or beginning or whatever. There's a lot of them. So I want to try to address the offensive line, the interior, especially looking to possibly move on from Mr. Billy Turner. Um, no offense, but it's just, it's not going well. And, um, like everything else, if it goes well, I can change my pick. But as of right now, I don't think this is going to pan out. So, in the seventh round, pick 216, the Green Bay Packers select Ben Cleveland, guard, Georgia. Six foot six, 341 pounds. Complete divergence. Uh, to be honest, I mean, the Packers might not even be interested in a guy that's this size, or at least tell him to, to cut down. But I, I like him. He is a big, physical mauling offensive lineman um, you know you slide him over to the right side maybe he doesn't quite have the athleticism that you would want but again seventh round pick and he is just going to absolutely annihilate some people you get the guy eating a couple salads doing a couple push-ups see if he can maybe get out on those screen plays it's a flyer right it's the seventh round but if this guy pans out plays for a big program in Georgia he's had some great backs running behind him um, he's going to have AJ Dillon maybe Aaron Jones I don't know 
but just the idea of having a much more physical team, which the Packers clearly are headed toward um, more physicality on offense and defense. But again, continuing to work this offensive line, continuing to get more physical, continuing to get younger and upgrade what we have. Um, I just feel like this is a fairly good fit. But that's going to do it. That's seven rounds for the Green Bay Packers. If you are a Packer fan or just like to stay up on what's going on with the Green Bay Packers, make sure you check out the Packernet podcast. I do it five days a week. It goes to seven days a week when the season starts. Be sure to check out Fan to Fan Network. You can find it FTFN over on Twitch, fantofannetwork.com. Finally, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification, and I will catch you next time.